If you have a calico cat in your home, look at them right now. You aren't just looking at a pet with a fancy coat. You are looking at a walking biological glitch, a creature that, according to the standard rules of genetics, shouldn't really exist in the way other cats do. Researchers have confirmed that calico cats are biologically unique, but not for the reasons most people think. It isn't just about their famous tortitude or their good luck status in Japan. It is about a genetic war happening inside every single cell of their body. Most people think calico is a breed. It's not. It is a genetic phenomenon called X inactivation that is so complex it is literally impossible to clone a calico cat and get the same pattern twice. In the next few minutes we are going to decode the DNA of the most mysterious cat in the world. We will explain why 99.9% .9 of them are female, the shocking medical reason why male calico cats are basically unicorns and why they often can't reproduce, and the scientific truth behind their spicy personality. And stay with me until reason number eight, because we are going to debunk a massive myth about cloning. If you think you can clone your beloved calico to get another one just like her, science has some very bad news for you. Let's decode the mystery of the tricolor cat. Point one, the X chromosome battle. To understand why your cat looks like a patchwork quilt, you have to understand the genes behind coat color. In the cat world, there are essentially only two base colors, orange and black. That's it. White isn't a color, it's a lack of pigment. The instructions for orange and black are carried exclusively on the X chromosome. Now here is the biological math that rules their lives. A male cat is XY. He has only one X. So he can be orange or he can be black. He cannot be both. He only has one slot for color data. A female cat is XX. She has two slots. She can have one X that says be orange and another X that says be black. But a body cannot listen to two conflicting instructions at once. So when a female calico is just a tiny embryo, a process called lionization occurs. In every single cell, the body flips a coin. It turns off one X chromosome and keeps the other on. In one patch of skin, the orange X wins. In the patch next to it, the black X wins. Your calico cat is literally a living mosaic of active and inactive genes. No two calicos have the same pattern because those coin flips are completely random. This is why calico isn't a breed, it's a visual map of embryonic development. But if this requires two X chromosomes, how on earth do male calicos exist? Because they do. And the reason is a genetic condition that is actually quite serious. Point two, the Kleinfelter mutant. You've probably heard the stat, only one in 3,000 calico cats is male, but why? For a male to be calico, he needs to be black and orange. So he needs two X chromosomes, but to be male he needs a Y chromosome. So a male calico is a genetic mutant with an XXY chromosomal makeup. In science, this is known as Kleinfelter's syndrome. He is a chimera, a genetic anomaly. And because of this extra chromosome, nearly all male calico cats are sterile. They cannot reproduce. Their biology is so focused on managing this extra genetic data that their reproductive system often doesn't develop fully. This leads to a hard truth. You cannot breed calico cats. You cannot put a male calico and a female calico together and expect calico kittens. It's biologically impossible. The pattern is a random accident of nature, not a breedable trait. So if you have a male calico, cherish him. He is rarer than a four-leaf clover. But he might also come with health issues like lower bone density, which is common with Kleinfelters. Now, while the males are rare, the females are famous for something else entirely, their attitude. Point three, the tortitude factor. If you ask any vet tech or shelter worker, they will tell you, calico cats have a spicy personality. We call it tortitude. They are independent, feisty, and quick to slap you if you pet them wrong. But is this real or is it just a stereotype? For a long time, scientists said it was a myth. But a recent study from UC Davis finally validated what owners have known for years. They surveyed over 1-200 cat owners and found a statistically significant link between sex-linked coat patterns, like calico and torty, and challenging behavior. 
Calicos were reported to be more likely to hiss, chase or swat during interactions compared to solid-coloured cats. Why? The theory is fascinating. The genes for coat colour on the X chromosome might be linked to genes that regulate neurotransmitters like dopamine and serotonin, the chemicals that control mood and aggression. When nature selects for that complex orange and black pattern, it might also be selecting for a more reactive, high-energy nervous system. So if your calico runs the house and bullies the dog, it's not bad training. It might be in her DNA. She is genetically wired to be the boss. Before we move on to the genetic difference between torties and calicos, I have to ask you a controversial question. Be honest. Is your calico actually crazy or is she just misunderstood? Some owners swear their calico is the sweetest angel on earth, while others say they live with a tiny beautiful demon. I want to know the truth. Go to the comments right now and tell me, on a scale of 1 to 10, how much tortitude does your cat have? 1 being an angel, 10 being a bossy queen. Let's see if the science holds up. But wait, before you label your cat, do you actually have a calico? Or do you have a tortie? Because there is one gene that changes everything. Point 4. The piebald gene. We often use the terms calico and tortoise shell interchangeably, but biologically, they are different expressions of the same genetic concept. The difference lies in the white spotting gene. A tortoise shell has the black and orange mix, but she lacks the gene for white. Her coat is a dark, swirled brindle, often looking like a chaotic storm cloud. A calico has the same black and orange base, but she also carries the piebald gene. This gene acts like a biological eraser. During development, it says, no color here and no color there. This creates the large patches of white. And here is the cool part. The amount of white dictates the size of the color patches. If a cat has low white, the black and orange blend together. If a cat has high white, the white pushes the colors apart into distinct large islands. So the white fur is actually a barrier that separates the colors. There is also a ghost version called the dilute calico. This happens when a separate gene tells the pigment to fade out. Black becomes blue and orange becomes cream. It's the same genetic math, just with the volume turned down. Point five, the chimera mystery. We talked about the rare male XXY cats, but there is an even rarer phenomenon that creates calicos, and this one belongs in a science fiction movie. It's called chimerism. Sometimes a male calico isn't a mutant with an extra chromosome. He's actually two cats fused into one. This happens very early in the womb. Two separate embryos, one black male and one orange male, collide and fuse together. They become a single organism. As this kitten grows, he has two completely different sets of DNA. Some of his cells have the DNA of the black cat, and some have the DNA of the orange cat. This means a chimera calico isn't just a genetic anomaly. He is his own brother. If you did a DNA test on his blood, it might show one result but a DNA test on his skin might show another. This is incredibly rare, but it explains some of the fertile male calicos that have baffled scientists for decades. They are walking biological secrets. Because of this unique look, humans have been obsessed with calicos for centuries. In fact, one calico literally saved a railway company from bankruptcy. Point six, the lucky cat economy. You've seen the Maneki Neko, the Japanese beckoning cat statue in restaurants. Notice the color. It's almost always a calico. In Japan, calicos are considered the ultimate symbol of fortune. This belief is so strong that in the 1800s, Japanese sailors paid a premium to have a calico ship's cat, believing they could ward off storms and angry spirits. But the most famous calico in history wasn't a spirit. She was an employee. In 2007, the Kishi train station in Japan was dying. They had to fire all the staff. As a last resort, they appointed a local stray calico named Tama as the station master. They gave her a hat and an office. The result? Tama became a global viral sensation. Tourists flocked to see her. It is estimated that Tama contributed over $10 million to the local economy. She saved the railway line single-handedly. When she passed away, she was enshrined as a Shinto goddess. This reinforces the myth that calicos are money cats. In the US, people used to believe that because male calicos were rare, they were worth thousands of dollars. 
Spoiler, they aren't. Since they are sterile and often have health issues, they have no value to breeders, but to a loving owner, they are priceless. Point seven, the Viking map. The calico isn't just a pop culture icon. She is a historical map. Scientists have actually used the orange gene found in calicos to trace the movement of human civilization. The genetic mutation for the orange coat originated in Egypt and Turkey. But how did it get to your sofa in America or Europe? The answer is Vikings. Geneticists mapping the spread of cat coat colors found that the orange gene followed the exact trade routes of Viking ships. Vikings preferred orange and calico cats, likely for their size and mouse hunting abilities. As they raided and traded across Europe, they left their cats behind. So, if you have a calico, you are looking at the direct descendant of a cat that might have sat on a Viking longship a thousand years ago. Her coat is a living artifact of maritime history. But despite all this history and genetic power, there is one thing you can never do with a calico, and it's the final proof of their uniqueness. Point 8. The Cloning Failure in the early 2000s, scientists tried to clone a calico cat named Rainbow. The goal was to prove that we could copy a pet exactly. They succeeded in creating a clone kitten named CC, copycat. But when CC was born, the scientists were shocked. She didn't look like Rainbow. She had the exact same DNA. She was a clone. But her coat pattern was completely different. How is this possible? Remember point one. X inactivation, the coin flip. That coin flip happens randomly in the womb. It is environmental, not just genetic. Even with identical DNA, you cannot force the cells to make the same choice twice. This proves that your calico cat is truly a one-of-a-kind event in the universe. Even technology cannot replicate her pattern. She is a biological fingerprint that will never exist again. Conclusion, the genetic queen. So, when you look at your calico, remember, you are looking at a genetic survivor. A creature that is 99.9% .9 female, genetically mosaic, potentially a chimera, and scientifically impossible to copy. She carries the tortitude of a queen and the legacy of a Japanese goddess. But having a cat with such a strong personality means you need to be an expert at reading her signals. Calicos are vocal, but they also use silent body language to tell you when they are happy or when you are about to get swatted. So next time you look at your calico, remember, you're looking at a genetic miracle, a living mosaic of science, mystery and history. A cat that can't be cloned, but will always leave a mark. But if you think calicos are unique, wait until you meet the legends of the orange cats. Have you heard of the one orange brain cell meme? It might sound like a joke, but science has some wild answers. Click the next video to discover the 10 scientific reasons why orange cats are chaotic, loud, loving, and maybe even geniuses in disguise. We'll talk about Viking genetics, black freckle spots, clingy affection, and an evolutionary hunger that explains their obsession with food. Head to the next episode. If you live with an orange cat, or are thinking of getting one, this is the video that will make you say, Oh, now I get it.